Good afternoon. My name is Tim Wilson, and I'm a fisheries biologist in Fisheries Management Area 1 up here in Northwest Pennsylvania. I'm here today to talk about walleye fisheries and walleye fishing in Pennsylvania. So let's get started. In the United States, walleyes, or Sander vitreous, are native to the Ohio, Upper Mississippi, and the Missouri River drainages and the Great Lakes. You can see the native range of walleyes is pictured here in green, and the areas where they have been introduced are pictured in yellow. Sauger, or, or Sander canadensis, are also native to Pennsylvania. In addition, there is also a walleye sauger hybrid known as the Sauguy. Nationwide, the stocking of Sauguys has been greatly reduced because it was discovered that they are a fertile hybrid capable of back crossing with either parent. Therefore, to protect the genetic integrity of both walleyes and saugers, the stocking of hybrids has been discouraged. The current world record for walleyes is pictured here. This 25 pound walleye was caught in 1960 from Old Hickory Lake in Tennessee. This, this record was recognized as the world record, was then disqualified, and has since then been reinstated when old affidavits were found in Tennessee. Pennsylvania's record walleye was caught in 1980 from Allegheny Reservoir and it weighed 17 pounds and 9 ounces. Of all the walleye records in the United States, Pennsylvania's is the ninth largest. And currently, 44 of the 50 states and 8 of the 13 Canadian provinces recognize a record for angler caught walleyes. Walleye management in Pennsylvania is guided by specific walleye management plans. The first plan was published in 1988 and it standardized how the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission stocked and managed walleyes. The next plan was adopted in 2011 with the goal of, of evaluating all walleye stocking in Pennsylvania, especially those fish stocked in flowing waters. These, these evaluations were undertaken to ensure that the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission was using anglers' dollars wisely by only stocking walleyes in waters that showed good survival of stocked fish and created walleye fisheries desirable to anglers. The 2020 Walleye Plan update is just that. It's an update on our progress in completing the tasks set forth in the 2011 Walleye Plan as well as suggesting some new tasks to guide walleye management into the future. The 2011 walleye plan is available on our website for anglers to read and the 2020 update should be available soon. So following the evaluations mandated by the 2011 walleye plan, we have reduced the number of waters we stock with walleyes. Currently, there are only four large reservoirs where walleye fry stockings have proven effective. These are Pima Tuning Reservoir, Pima Tuning Sanctuary, Allegheny Reservoir, and East Branch Clarion River Lake. Most of our stocking now is done through fingerlings. Our hatcheries produce one to one and a half million fingerlings each year. These fish are 30 to 40 days old and are about three quarters of an inch to one and a half inches long. All waters are stocked at a base rate of 20 fingerlings per surface acre, and when sur surplus fingerlings are available, they're distributed according to a pre-established priority list. The 42 waters we currently stock with fry and fingerlings are represented by black stars. At the moment, we stock 40 lakes and two rivers with walleyes. Current and historic walleyes stockings can be viewed on the PFBC website. So which waters are the best places to catch walleyes? Our best lakes for walleyes are shown here with yellow stars. Lake Erie is not stocked with walleyes, but is in the middle of a great walleye boom, which fellow biologist Mark Halfley will talk about later today. The rest are stocked waters and provide walleye populations that should be attractive to Pennsylvania anglers. Opposite of our best fishing lakes, our best walleye fishing rivers are maintained solely through natural reproduction. In the west, the three rivers, the Allegheny, Monongahela, and the Ohio, provide walleye fisheries of varying densities based upon natural reproduction. The lower Yakagani River also contains a good walleye population. 
In the eastern part of the state, the best walleye river is the north branch of the Susquehanna River, which maintains an excellent walleye population strictly through natural reproduction. Aside from our best fishing rivers, there are many other waters that contain fair to low density walleye populations. In the west, the lower end of most of the tributaries to the Allegheny River contain walleyes, some through natural reproduction and some through seasonal migrations from the Allegheny River. The walleyes in the Shenango River come from stocked fingerlings that have escaped through Shenango Dam and have taken up residence in the river, providing a low density fishery. In the east, a mix of natural reproduction and immigration produced low density walleye fisheries in the Juniata, Susquehanna, West Branch Susquehanna and Delaware rivers, and in the lower ends of Pine Creek, Bald Eagle Creek, and Loyal Sock Creek. Occasionally, the state of New Jersey also stocks the Delaware River with walleyes. I would not classify these as destination fisheries, but these are places local, ang local anglers can occasionally expect to catch a walleye or two. Regulations governing walleye fishing in Pennsylvania can be found in the fishing the fishing summary that comes with your fishing license. Generally, the statewide regulations cover, covering Commonwealth inland waters consist of an open season that extends from the first Saturday, Saturday in May through to the 14th, March 14th of the following year. Anglers may harvest up to six walleyes per day, all of which must be equal to or greater than 15 inches. Currently, Lake Erie is managed with the same regulations, However, the Lake Erie Committee may adjust these regulations. If they do make adjustments, the changes will be posted before opening day. There are only a few waters that vary from these standard regulations across the state. Waters such as Pima Tuning Reservoir, the Delaware River, and Conowingo Reservoir have slight variations to the standard regulations. Again, these can all be found in your 2021 fishing summary. Now that we have a good idea of where to fish for walleyes, how do we go about catching them? Well, whether you're hunting whitetail deer, trapping beavers, or fishing for walleyes, basic knowledge of the animal you're chasing will go a long way in determining success. I believe that a good walleye angler requires a certain amount of knowledge about walleyes. Obviously, locating walleyes is, a criti is critical to catching them. If an angler has a good understanding of walleye physiology and walleye behavior, and knows the basic characteristics of the water he or she attends to fish, they should be able to predict the best locations to find walleyes at any given time of year. I think the fisherman formula states it best. Knowledge about walleyes will help anglers predict their location. Walleye location will often determine the best presentation to catch them. Walleyes are classified as cool water fish because of the temperatures at which they spawn, usually from the mid-30s to upper 40s. They are active year-round, including during the winter and under the ice. Their preferred temperature for foraging and growth is 68 to 75, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature range, is when, temperature range is when they are most active and feed most often, which would then be the best time to target them. Their upper lethal limit for water temperature is from 85 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Water temperatures near this level suggest it would be a very poor time to target walleyes because this type of temperature stress will cause them to greatly, greatly reduce their food intake. Like most of our sport fish in Pennsylvania, walleyes require at least 5 milligrams per liter or 5 parts per million of dissolved oxygen. This really only becomes an issue during lake stratification. If you don't know if your lake stratifies, or in other words, develops a thermocline, and if you don't know if the water below that thermocline goes anoxic or without oxygen, you need to call your local PFBC biologist to learn more about your water. These factors will often determine walleye location during the height of summer. The water at the bottom of the lake might be a comfortable 60 degrees, but if there's no oxygen down there, there won't be any walleyes down there either. And finally, perhaps the most important factor of walleye physiology when it comes to angling is the tapetum lucidum, which is the reflective layer behind the retina in a walleye's eye. We'll talk more about this in a moment. 
Walleyes are fish eaters, or piscivorous, mainly but not exclusively. Therefore, it pays to know the forage based on the waters where you plan to target walleyes. Walleyes are demersal, which means they are generally related to bottom structure. There are certain situations where this is not the case, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Walleyes are a schooling fish, so if you catch one, repeating your presentation should produce more. Now back to that tapetum lucidum. This reflective layer behind the, behind the retina gives the walleye outstanding vision in low light, which is why they are most active at dusk, nighttime, and dawn when their low light vi vision provides them a distinct advantage over their prey. This, this behavior is termed crepuscular. However, other low light conditions can make walleyes active during the day, including turbid water and a good surface trough that reduces light penetration. The thing to remember is that these, are, these behaviors are generalizations. Often, not all walleyes are doing the same thing at the same time. With our basic knowledge of walleye physiology and behavior, we can now use it to predict walleye location in lakes, which is the key to catching them. We know that if possible, we should be fishing during periods of low light, such as dusk, dawn, and nighttime. Their movements during these low light periods will also be based upon the forage base they are utilizing, and generally these movements will be towards shallower water. Walleyes will move to mid-lake humps, main lake points, and gently, gently sloping shoreline flats in search of their prey. If they're keying on perch and sunfish, they, walk, they can often be found in sparse weed beds. If they're feeding primarily on pelagic or open water prey, such as alewives and gizzard shad, they be, may be roaming the open water in large schools unattached to any structure. When water temperatures are elevated, the areas where the thermocline intersects the lake bottom can concentrate walleyes looking for their preferred water temperature. In rivers, walleye will exhibit, exhibit similar behavior with movement during low light periods into shallow water areas in search of prey. Often at dusk, walleyes will move into shallow riffles and also uh, runs. Walleyes also prefer the deltas formed at the mouth of tributaries. In the impounded sections of our rivers, walleyes will move to the shallow riffles below locks and dams. During daytime, walleyes will often rest in deeper pools and low current areas. They will stay in these low current areas throughout the winter, feeding and resting in these deep pools. Toward the end of winter, walleyes and rivers will move towards the, their native spawning areas, in, in, such as major tributaries and main river riffles, that provide the right combination of clean gravel and flow. Quite often, these riffles are immediately below locks and dams in the impounded sections of our rivers. To learn about the walleye population you are targeting, there are multiple sources for good information. For specific waters, it pays to look at the biologist reports on the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission website. These will have information on the size, structure, and density of walleyes and the species composition of the forage base. In addition, local fishing reports will suggest specific locations and techniques that are working. Another good source of information is your local bait and tackle shops. Remember, they want you to have success so they will come back so that you will come back and buy more bait and tackle. So they generally will supply you with good information. Walleye fishing clubs or lake specific fishing clubs consist of members that have extensive local knowledge and expertise. Joining them can connect you with experts which will dramatically reduce the time needed to gain knowledge versus the old trial and error method. Quite often we biologists are asked, how old is the fish I just caught? For walleyes, it really does depend on where you catch it. The interaction of habitat and forage will determine how fast a walleye grows and how long it takes to reach legal size and sexual maturity, and often how long it may actually live. Walleyes are sexually dimorphic, meaning males and females grow at different rates, with female walleyes being larger at the same age and attaining a larger maximum size. Generally speaking, slower growing walleyes live longer. 
Looking at this graph, we can see from the orange line that it takes only two and a half years for a walleye to reach 15 inches in Pima Tuning Lake versus four years in the Allegheny River represented by the yellow line on the bottom. There is an entire fishing industry designed to help anglers learn how to catch walleyes. There are numerous, numerous fishing magazines and fishing TV shows available, many of which cater specifically to walleye anglers. Most personalities in the fishing industry also maintain their own YouTube channels, and many of these cater specifically to walleye anglers. As mentioned before, joining an angling club, angling club of like-minded anglers can shorten the learning curve. And finally, taking a fishing trip with a friend or fishing with a guide that is good at catching walleyes can be a real eye-opener and teach you many things you would take a long time to learn. There are innumerable presentations designed to catch walleyes. Thousands, and probably more like millions, of walleyes are caught each year on live bait. The top three are minnows, night crawlers, and leeches. These can be presented by many different ways, including live bait rigs, bottom bouncers, jigs, spinners, and even under a bobber. Especially for walleyes that feed on alewives, gizzard, sh gizzard shad, and other pelagic forage, trolling can be the best presentation. With depth control provided by dipsy divers, jet divers, downriggers, or even a three-way rig, anglers can present walleyes with brightly colored lures, spoons, and even live bait like a nightcrawler harness. For those anglers like myself that prefer a more active method of fishing, casting live bait and lures to likely walleye locations can be very productive. Casting and retrieving blade baits and jigging lures has really taken off in recent years, in addition to the tried and true methods of casting and retrieving diving lures and jigs tipped with live bait. Walleyes can be fickle fish. Just because you caught them in one location using one technique last year doesn't mean that's going to always work. Forage bases, forage bases shift in dominant species. The size structure of the walleye population may change, and we know that big fish often don't act like small fish, and weather is always changing. So the best advice I can give any angler is this. If what you're currently doing isn't working, try something else. A new location, a different bait, a different time of day, but make some type of change. Try a presentation you've never tried before. You can always come back if it doesn't pan out, but make, make some type of change. Thank you for listening and good luck fishing this year.